people can really get inside their own heads and doubt themselves. Anytime we've had an opportunity, we've always said yes to the opportunity. And then later we'll panic behind closed doors and figure out like, oh my God, we're going to do this. But like, we will always say yes first and then figure it out after. Like yeah. getting something done is better than perfect. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the 2020 podcast, bringing clarity to business, entrepreneurship and life. I am your host, Dr. Harbir Sayan. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me here to learn and to grow. I really, really appreciate the support. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts and follow along on Spotify. I have two incredible guests. I'm actually truly so excited to have on the show here. They have built a huge globally recognized brand. They are multiple, multiple time award winners in their industry and they have the largest academy in Canada for makeup artistry and wedding. Oh my gosh, guys, I botched it already. Wedding, uh, makeup and hair and everything. You're going to have to have to correct me, but I'm so, so grateful to have the founders of Pink Orchid Studio, Harp Sohal and Shannon Mann. Thank you guys so much for joining me and please Hello. correct me, the largest academy for South Asian bridal styling. So South every Asian bridal styling know. in yes. Canada. Yeah, but we also do Western brides, but you know, getting a South Asian bride ready is uh, there's a lot of there's a lot to it. And we yeah. teach everything from A to Z, from hair, makeup, pinning, how to calm them down, how to yeah. figure out what they want and execute it on their wedding day. But there's so much more to to what you guys have built. Right. We're going to just jump right in because Pink Orchid Studio is not just um, hair and makeup. It's not just the Academy. You have a line of products as well under under your brand. What type of products do you guys carry? Do you want to take this hard? Yeah. So basically the way the products came, um, the way that they were kind of born was when we used to do, when we do hair and makeup on our brides, anything that we would find challenging that would make our lives difficult, we tried to always find a solution for it. So for example, our hairline kind of began when Shannon was creating these elaborate hairstyles. She found, found that like, you know, we needed like hair nets or hair buns or hair extensions. So we sourced them and we started using them on our clients and they were just, they were fantastic. So we thought, why not offer this to the general public as well? And that's kind of how um, our product line started. So it started organically with hair, um, hair products. And then we, we decided, well, let's do cosmetics because that's something we use a lot. And, you know, there isn't a whole lot of South Asian cosmetic brands out there. And we thought, why not? Why not? Just, let's just try. Let's see how it goes. And it's been phenomenal. I mean, we love our products. We wear our products ourselves. One of the things that we found was when we were doing our, in our, in our culture, there's this um, ceremony called the Dolly. So when the bride is given away, she um, cries a lot. So her make, eye makeup would always smear. Mm -hmm. So we created um, a lit liner, which is smear proof. Um, water resistant it's oh. basically dolly proof so it made our lives <laughs> easier awesome. so is that, that's kind of how our line evolved that's amazing that's innovative mm -hmm. that's 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 actually how i think all the best products are are made in in our lives right is like there's a need somebody mm -hmm. said this needs to be better and then you come up with a way so you know in the podcast the subtitle of the podcast the word entrepreneurship is there and i really like to focus on that side of things and you guys are true entrepreneurs to me entrepreneurship is having an idea and then building that thing from the ground up and then hopefully into something successful not all entrepreneurs are as successful as you guys of course oh, uh, tell me where that entrepreneurial spirit came from were you guys like uh when you were kids you're like i want to own a business or like where did that come from and and did it grow over time it did um for, for me i I've taken uh, marketing and business administration and my degree is actually in business administration, majoring in entrepreneurial leadership. Oh, wow. So when I was, when I was little, my dad used to always be like business lady, Barna, business, like so I'll be business. You're going to be your own boss. And he always uh, like really like imparted that in me. And I don't think that when you go to school, that's necessarily um, that's necessarily taught to you. But in business and places that I worked, I honestly felt like, sorry for my disorder, I honestly I felt like people, <laughs> people didn't, you gotta be a mom too, okay? Yes, of course. <laughs> they need to get done at home. 
um, I feel like pe people didn't really listen to me at the places where I worked. Like I would get really frustrated. Like I worked at ICBC. I think I have these ideas. I'd walk into the manager's office and they're like, go back to your desk, you know? And so there were some of that, um, but actually it was Pinder bought, purchasing his own pharmacy and kind of buying it from his boss and then him becoming his own boss and watching him and helping him through that journey kind of changed my mindset. And then I thought like, okay, well, you know, there's, I used to think that they, there was maybe something more that people that own businesses have over you. And then when you sit in a room with a really, you know, a smart bunch of people and you think like, Hey, I'm just as smart as these people. And kind of like the ideas start to kind of bubble. So Pinder and I are both kind of, we're both have that entrepreneurial spirit. So there was yeah. that I always wanted to, and there's no marketing firms that are really interesting, at least when I went to school to, you know, lend my creative you know, I, I love marketing and I love business. There's no place for me to apply or I would have to move to Toronto hmm. and then you throw marriage and kids in there. And then, and the rest of it, I'll tell, I'll let her tell you how it came about. Cause we're both very passionate about like fashion and makeup and our own experiences with our own getting ready for our weddings also really guided us both to the, the next part of the story, which is how it was born. I guess okay. that's your cue, Harp. <laughs> well, um, when I was getting married in 2005, I found that the in, like the wedding industry, um, and this was just back then, um, I, we, we both found that it was kind of flaky in the sense that you would book a vendor and then they wouldn't show up. You didn't, there wasn't really any, nobody was really reliable. And I was finding when I was doing, looking for a hair and makeup artist for myself, that was what was happening. People weren't showing up to their consults or I wasn't really happy with the service. Like the prices were what you were paying, what you were paying for, you weren't really getting in terms of customer service. So when I got married, I ended up doing my own hair uh, makeup and Shannon helped with the hair. And um, that's kind of where it's, it was, the idea was kind of like planted. Um, we decided, okay, well, I'm really good at doing, we're both the chickens of our family. Like whenever there's an event, everyone would come to us to get their hair and makeup done, but we weren't doing it professionally. So we decided, Hey, we're best friends. I mean, let's see where this will go. We kind of did it on the side. Um, when we first started Pink Orchid Studio, I was still working full time at an insurance firm. So was Shannon. Actually, Shannon had just come off of mat leave. Um, and we, we, kind, we knew right away when we did this, we weren't going to just do it kind of half ass. We were going to put everything that we had into it. So I was working 40 hours there and plus working 40 hours here. And at one point we just decided, all right, it's time to take this leap of faith quit our day jobs and give it a hundred percent. And let's just see where it takes us. I think we've always really believed in, um, in, in ourselves in the sense that we, we have something great here. And um, it was never about, I guess for me and my, my family, it was always like, my parents have always told me, get a great job, have benefits, you know, work for the government, whatever, you know, how I was raised. It was not, they were really scared that I was going to take this leap of faith on myself and start my own business and not have benefits and all the securities that a, a nine to five kind of offers. But um, there's much more like being an entrepreneur. It's, it's not a nine to five, it's a 24 seven, but there's so much reward that I wouldn't see myself doing anything other than working for myself or doing this, what I've, that's what we're doing now. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I like that kind of the two different aspects of that, right? And, and uh, Shannon, you having that sort of entrepreneurial education specifically a little more formally, but you guys taking that leap, I, if you're able to, I'd love to see if we can like really zoom in on just that moment where you decided, okay, we're going to take the leap full force, you know, yeah. uh, we're going to jump think, in both feet. I think that has to be a switch that goes off. Like, and we tell this to our students too, if you put in half, you know, like do this on the side, it's always going to be something that's on the side. Mm -hmm. And we are lucky that we, our husbands can financially support us so that we were able to like really go after the dream. Um, and they were, both had faith in us and said, yeah, you know what? We believe in you guys and we think you guys really have something here. So the, the most important thing I can say to anybody embarking on the journey of entrepreneurship is touching on a little bit what Harp said is 24 seven. So it's not something like from the moment I wake up to the pretty much the moment I go to sleep, there's always something pink orchid related that I'm doing. I'm reviewing a product, um, doing graphics for sales. We're talking on our group chats. We're talking about new products we want to bring in. We're already on to like the next. Um, Even as we're speaking, I'm already snapping Sashana and then tagging. <laughs> <over you. laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's like a constant moving part. 
And if you ignore it, like anything in your life, it's not going to grow. So it really needs your attention. Um, I think that some people kind of entertain the idea of maybe I should do this because I feel like it's lucrative or it's good money anything that you do in life like you know as well if if you're not passionate about it it's going to read it's going to show and people aren't going to really feel the product like it takes a lot of I feel like a lot of energy to to grow a business so you have to really be willing to put in the time and the commitment and you have to ask yourself are you really passionate about it and are you I feel like in the first two years of having a business like you're it's not a 40 hour like you should basically be approaching it with a plan and that it's like an 80 hour week to really grow something from nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's not, um, it's not something that comes easily, but if you want it and you want it badly, like anything in life, you've got to put the work in really perfect your craft, whatever it is that you do and, you know, try to share that passion with people. So, you know, I feel like we're in Vancouver and in Toronto, even in the South Asian community, we have a lot of really passionate entrepreneurs and you're seeing it in podcasts, you're seeing it in fashion, you're seeing it with like a lot of social movements and like, Mm. it's that excitement, but just keeping it up, like not dropping it. Yeah. And have strategies in play. Don't just be like, I'm going to start this business and wing it. It's you have to have strategies in play, have a business plan and then commit to it and like actually pursue it. Like you, um, like I believe, like we even with Shannon and myself, in the beginning of the year, we have a meeting on what our our forecast for the year is going to look like, and then we go after those tasks, and then you just kind of check them off as you're going. Okay, well, we wanted to release the spring line. Here it is. This is what it's going to take to release it. Like you just have to always stay on top of your business and have a game plan. You know, that's actually uh, both of you, of course, uh, amazing advice and. Something that I've heard now, having done a bunch of these podcasts and speaking to different business owners and entrepreneurs, um, for sure, a commonality there, a common practice there is setting those goals, kind of reviewing them regularly, making sure you're on track. Um, And I think there are, and I'm speaking for myself also here, you know, in certain endeavors where it's kind of being, "Ah, let's just see, I'll see how it goes. But that's rarely ever going to be, unless you just get really lucky, it's rarely ever going to lead you to that point that you're visualizing. It's going to require you going back and and resetting goals and stuff like that. And, and you know what, I'm really glad you said that because when people look at the a pink over at overall, right, they'll always say to us, Oh, you guys are so lucky, you're so su- successful, or whatever it is that they say, and both Shannon and I are like, are they talking about us? Like, <laughs> we know what it takes, we yeah. nobody understands it, there have been so many risks that both Shannon and I have taken in our business that we've completely failed. Like we've, landed on our face but you just get up and you're like okay that was a waste of time money energy but it's okay at least we tried and I really love that about Shannon and myself that we, at least we always take a chance and we try and we fail many times and there's sometimes that we succeed but at least we're trying you know you never know unless you try yeah, yeah. and, I, and it's, it's sad a lot of people have like a really strong sense of self-doubt and I feel like we we really vibe off each other that way where um, if one person isn't feeling confident, the other person can kind of like pull up their bootstraps if they're not feeling it and be like, all right, you know. Yeah, let's go, Bobo Share. We got it. Yeah. So it's nice to have someone like for a while, you know, Park wants a break, I'll post a bunch of content. And then when she's on, I'm like, okay, I can take a couple days off. (laughs) Having to do it by yourself, though, I feel like would be, it would be twice as as much work. And I can't imagine working twice as much as I do. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's true that if you have, I mean, from, from the sounds of it, like you said, you guys are, you vibe off each other, you're on the same wavelength, then in that scenario, I can imagine it's, it helps build you up or, you know, speeds everything up or helps you guys support each other. But, you know, a lot of business partnerships don't work quite that well, or there are people who are solos uh, who are, are struggling. Um, but I want to go back to, you know, what you were saying there, um, Harp, you know, people will say, well, it looks nice or you know you're lucky or whatever it might be and from the outside it's like wow you're traveling across well not right now you're not but traveling Mm -hmm. around the world to do uh you know hair and makeup for for other people you're meeting um you know actresses and and other people successful people and um you know it looks glamorous yeah but it looks glamorous now i'm sure it hasn't always been glamorous it's so funny funny you say that because that's exactly why we got into this industry um 
it's, I'm going to be very frank when I'm speaking here, the hair and makeup industry, when we, when I was growing up, if I were to tell my dad or somebody that I was related to that, I'm going to be a makeup artist, it was so looked down upon. It was almost like in India, you know, like you're a nukkar Ali or you're a, a, you know, makeup Ali. Like it's not, oh, makeup Ali, Agi, Karn, makeup. Parlor Ali, Parlor Ali. Parlor, so, par, parlor Ali, Parlor Ali, Agi. So it wasn't respected by any means. But when we both decided we were going to do this, we, we wanted to change that narrative. We wanted to glamorize it. And I think it was the advent of Facebook in 2008 when we started, we really utilized free social media and we started kind of blogging everything we did. So we started posting the glamour behind the hair and makeup. We weren't just hair and makeup artists. We were showing the beautiful outfits. We were showing we're in beautiful hotels where we have this glamorous job. So it's all how you want to kind of how you want the, the lens to on your business to be. Mm. You are in control of what people see. Yeah. So you gotta have a marketing plan. Yeah. For sure. And there there are times where it's and, not glamorous because when no. we're on a plane, you know, we have like our homes and families that are watching our like Snapchats and we are like there's work to it as well. But of course yeah. part of the marketing plan is to make it look really glamorous and fun, you know, because it that part is, but you know, then your families are at home and our husbands are, you know, changing yeah. diapers and doing the dishes and cooking. You and have like, to come home and do it all yourself. Yeah. You're yeah. on your hands and knees tying somebody else's Louboutines, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, uh, it, yeah, that's yeah, the double edged sword is being away from our families is it's tough because there is a family waiting at home and, you know, kids yeah. watching your Snapchat, like, mom, that doesn't look like work. That looks like, the <laughs> you're like I don't work that. I'm going to the beach right now. I'll be, call you in an hour. <laughs> Little did they know that you're actually wearing, even on these destination weddings, you were wearing our makeup belts around our waists, and maybe we may look like we're having fun on the beach, but we're following the bride around, touching her up the whole day, you know? Oh, right, right. Yeah. Well, th that's, um, you know, another thing I wanted to, to definitely touch on is you're both, um, you know, mothers and wives, and you have, you know, so many responsibilities at home, but you've built this, you know, this brand that's so well recognized, you're businesswomen, you're entrepreneurs, but you're, and you're, and you're both huge on social media. I don't, personally don't like the word influencer, but you guys have a lot of influence. Um, and you have a lot of people who look up to you. How do you, I don't think this is an easy one to answer, but how do you maintain that? How do you balance that? What do you, what does your day look like? And like, if you can well, give me a short answer. I think that, you know, I feel like if you've ever watched the movie, The Truman Show, Mm -hmm. with Jim Carrey and he's you know he's he once he realizes who he's speaking to is on the other side of sort of like a glass lens but like even when it comes to this pandemic I do feel a little guilty because you know once when you're a mom and you live in a household and you have two children and your husband and you know Pinder's got businesses and Suk has businesses like our life is so inclusive in home that you it's almost hard to fathom that all these people know you like you'll go to a restaurant like or you walk down the street even with the mask on yesterday a, a woman stopped me and she's like pink orchid studio she just recognized me you know because I'm posting outfits of the day she probably recognized my coat or what I was wearing like she was watching it and people will talk to you like they know you which is really it's it's very cool and I love having that but you know really with everything that's happened and having a break for work home is so busy that you know that's I think at the end of the day, that's the thing that matters kind of the most and takes up most of our time. So it doesn't matter what happens outside of the four walls. Like it's, 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 um, you know, your kids and your husband, it's your, you're a family person. And I think people are really surprised when they meet Harp and I, and they're like, you guys are so nice, you know, because that's, that's like what you see is what you get, how you're seeing us right now is exactly how we are with our friends and with our family. Um, but people I think have a, you know, they have a hard time of, you know, figuring, like trying to separate, you got to separate yourself as a person at home from the social media part of how people kind of perceive you. Yeah. And I think that social media is a beautiful thing, but it is a double edged social, uh, double edged sword. Like I've seen both sides of it. I've seen the good and I've seen the bad and I've been through a lot, but I feel like, you know, it's a choice. Um, I am, you, I first, when we started social media and showing our business, we did it to expand our business. We did it so people could have insight on who we are so they could, it eventually will benefit Pink Orchid Studio because then, you know, we'll get the business there. But then it kind of morphed into what it is now and people want to see what we're doing and what our lives um, entail. And it's hard because there's so as my kids are getting a little bit older and people are recognizing them as they're going out, I, I question myself even like, is this, is this what I want? And do I want 
to be so out there that like, um, like, you know, everywhere we go, we're kind of recognized. I, I don't mind it. I, I sometimes question it. I, we get a lot of love online. Like the, the support that we have from our community is overwhelming and we are here because of our community, but sometimes it's a little weird. Like you're sitting at a restaurant with your family and then you hear your voice and I'm just like, what? Cause someone's watching Somebody's my stuff. watching your, <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Oh, that's behind, you know, it's a little, it's, and we That's don't funny. consider ourselves like I feel like nowadays with so like before celebrities, you would watch them on TV. Right. So it would be some like you. But now every I'm not saying that we're celebrities at all, but I'm saying like when you watch someone on your screen, you know, everyone has a platform now. So it's a little it's hard adjusting to because we don't take ourselves that seriously at all. I just feel like I'm just a brown girl that was raised and born in Surrey and I do hair and makeup and I do it with my best friend there's no not a big deal you know yeah that's cool that's cool I I I do appreciate that humility even um I think it's safe to call you guys celebrities at least to some level now it's it's one thing if you want to call yourself (laughs) that I I mean in the sense that people recognize you and know who you are right you know in that regard for sure and and it's it's not for no reason. It's not didn't happen by accident. It's not because you were born into a family or anything. It's because you guys built something. So I think it's something to be proud of. Now, I want to go actually uh, before I go to that question, uh, Shannon. You've touched on marketing a few times. <clears throat> uh, I'm I love talking about branding and and marketing and stuff. Tell me if you don't mind sharing kind of like if somebody's starting a new brand, um, yeah. whether they got a new product or they have a new service. Do you have a few tips on whether it's relating to social media or other resources? What's a, what's a good one, two, three kind of like way to start? I would say um, be really conscious of like what, like have a mission statement. Like when we started Pink Orchid Studio, we went into it thinking, okay, we're going to create what's lacking in the market is like a really dependable kind of like elite marketing team. Like we really wanted to be the Chanel of the makeup and hair services. And so that was already like, when you think of that vision and how you want to brand and how you want to take your photos and the kind of, Uh, wording that you want to use and also the level of service that's required to get to where you want to be right so um, having all those things really clear before you start I think is really really helpful Um, and then um, you know also I guess market I guess market research is important but I feel like with a lot of um, companies, they'll just mirror what another company is doing. Mm -hmm. And I don't find that that works at all because if it's not your authentic brand, if you're so busy trying to be somebody else, you're not really truly yourself. So I think you have to really put the commit time in the commitment, have a vision of what exactly, like how is your brand, what makes you different? And then really focus on that. Like for us, it was sort of like showing the, the BTS behind the scenes of our relationship and the process of not just the bride getting ready, but our jobs and, and part of doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, so for, yeah, for small businesses, I would say having a really, having a really clear message of what you want to, what, what exactly are you selling and support things that like walk the walk. If you want to be perceived a certain way, mm. What, what are your competitors doing? And you have to do at least that much, but also what makes you, what's unique about your product? What makes you special? And then also, you know, cross-branding is really important. A lot of people reach out to us and we do support a lot of local businesses when they have um, new products, but rather than doing kind of the same thing over and over again, add your own kind of personal twist. And that might take a little bit of brainstorming of figuring out, but have that ready to go before you start your business. Yeah. And also you don't have to do it all yourself. If you don't know what you're doing in marketing, hire somebody, like get help. If you like for, we are the talent, right? Th- this is what is Pink Orchid Studio. But sometimes I need help. Like I don't, I'm not going to go and make the products myself. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to be at the warehouse doing all the shipping or managing my products. We we have a lot of help. That It's not just Shannon and I. We have a huge team that helps us run this juggernaut. In the beginning, we didn't, but we also got help where we needed it. If you need to get a loan to get that your business off the ground do it yeah having real realistic expectations as well and compare, yeah, comparing yourself to you know we don't answer our emails we have uh you know admin team that does that you know there's when everyone you first start up job. though everyone has their job but I, what i i do say to, to students when they are taking our academy is let them know like in the beginning how hard it was how many hours it took and uh when you are starting out on your own like you may have to and i like i i feel like I'm more of the type of person that I'm going to, I want to do it myself, like figure it out how to do it myself before I delegate, you know, but that also can be pretty taxing because 
there is so much to do. Yeah. <laughs> there's so much to do. But there's, you know, that's actually, it's great that you do that um, because that way when a job's being done, you know what it takes to do the job or whether it's being done right or wrong yeah. or where it might've gone wrong along the way. Whereas like, if you just hire somebody and you mm-hmm. have no idea actually what their job entails, I mean, it's hard to figure out when something's not working right or if you're overpaying and, someone to do something. And those are, those are the kind of mistakes that we've made. We have made. So it's better to, I think, kind of grow slowly and sort of learn about the little niches and try to stick your hand in it, figure out what you want to do, and then maybe mm. get an expert into to doing it. And yeah, I think every, I think every part of your business, you have to know what yeah, you have to have your on. fingers on it. Yeah, you have to know what's going on for sure. All right. I try to be careful where I stick my fingers, but, um, but you're right in some places. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, one of the things I, you know, I've been watching some of you guys, by the way, you have a lot of videos on YouTube and I think that's fantastic. Like really well-made videos, really cool content. Um, if I was a makeup artist or starting out, I'm sure it would be str- very valuable to me, but also like, I love that you, you talked about it already. You documented your journey and then you've done multiple videos where you talk about, um, you know, how you came up or what was kind of, the process um, or the journey, I think is what you called it. So along the way, one of the things that I know you touched on a few times is the client experience. Yes. And now we're talking about building the brand. I feel like that's extremely important. I think maybe more now than ever, you know? Um, so I'd love for you to tell me, um, I know there was one story that I heard you share, but if you could tell me a little bit about what the client experience means to you and how you make sure you're kind of going the extra mile to make sure the patient feel, it. In my case, the patient, but in your case, the client <laughs> would feel it. Well, in our, in our classes, we talk about this, we touch on this quite a bit where like one of the first things I say is like, once you master the hair and makeup, there's so much more to it, like down to like the first interactions with your client, brides are very anxious, trying to make them feel comfortable, having the right playlist for the right time of day and the occasion, setting the mood, you know, for the, for the client experience, things that we say and do communication is so important to make sure that you're listening to your clients. Makeup artists have such a bad reputation that they just kind of do the same thing on everybody. And you really want to make sure that you spend time communicating with them. So it's, it is like, I think number one, thing no it's not the marketing it's not the it's not the pictures of the beautiful brides I think the reason why we get booked is because of how we make our clients feel yeah 100% it's all word of mouth it's all to us like because there's so many pink orchid is such a huge umbrella that uh, there's a little there's different um side businesses that we have whether it's our academy our um you know our uh, freelance artist or our products the, the main thing that holds this whole thing together is our bride. Everything stems from our bride, her experience. We, the reason why we got into this, honestly, the first time I've ever got, we did hair and makeup on a bride. Um, we turned her around and um, she looked in the mirror. She almost started crying. She was just so happy. That mm-hmm. feeling that we get when she, when we make another woman feel that beautiful on such an important day in their life, it's addicting. It's like adrenaline. It just, mm-hmm. that's why we do it. I, you know, we got into this business because it wasn't the money. It wasn't to grow the way that we did. We didn't even know it was going to be this big that one day we solely did it because we love the joy of bringing other women joy. Like it's just, there's not, there's no other, for me, it's just so rewarding. There's no other gift like it. So there's like, it's, there's nothing. And I find that with social media too, women, our brides are so anxious. Mm -hmm. they are like there's so many things going out of their head that we almost have to sort of like bring them back get them to focus like this is your wedding day you're going to marry your best friend and you know as women I feel like and especially now more than ever we have so many insecurities we're looking at this person and she has the perfect nose and she is the perfect figure and she got a yeah yeah, she has a sabia sachi langa mine is just a generic from maybe not that you know and it, it doesn't matter what the bride is wearing or doing or getting as long as she you really bring out her personal style and make her feel confident enough to really focus on the day women we have so many things running through our heads that I feel like we're really good at like calming her down bringing her back to the present and making sure that she can be and we're married ourselves so we kind of have like that big sister advice as well like hey it's not gonna happen again when you're doing your llama really focus breathe like don't be short of breath you know, like make sure your shoulders are relaxed, like don't be like this and all like tense on your wedding day. So there's a lot of like that kind of advice. And when, and like Harp was saying, when she turns around and she's not worried about what she looks like and she feels amazing on that day, and you give her like 
the great service, but you give her all these advice so she can kind of really be part of the day. Then I feel like we're bonded with our clients for life. Like the, we'll see each other and, you know, mm-hmm. we spend so much time with them on their wedding day. It's, it's really, a, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. Like, it's not like it's, it's work, but it's kind of, it's such rewarding it's work. Oh, if for us, it's totally not. We just become friends with them. And, you know, it's just a, it's like a girl. It's, I can't even explain it. It's like the best job in the world. Yeah. That's amazing. It's like three friends getting, you know, having a great <laughs> chat and, you know, the hours do stink. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. say I do not like waking up that early. Other than the hours, I can't complain. Yeah. I don't think we're present. I think, yeah. I think there's so much uh, value in, in what you're saying there about building that client experience and, and making that person feel, obviously you're talking about doing hair and makeup and making a bride feel beautiful, but that's really at the core of it. Something that we as optometrists or anybody in any profession, like, especially for me, because I have one person, just like you have one person <laughs> sitting in front of you for a specific period of time, I think it should be something that we focus on as maybe the number one thing is to give that person the best experience. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like you're saying, Harp, it's not the, um, or Shannon, sorry, maybe you're saying it's not just once you've learned how to do the hair and makeup, that's the, that's one thing, but then there's so much more beyond that. So once I've learned how to be an optometrist and do the things an optometrist is supposed to do now, what's going to yeah. be the, extra stuff what's the other stuff I'm going to do to make that patient feel like they got the best eye exam ever so I think the the client experience is is so so important it's so Um, important because they're the ones that are going to refer all their friends and family to you yeah Yeah, absolutely Uh, I wanted to touch on I've had a few amazing women guests on the podcast uh, entrepreneurs and athletes and and others Um, I have two little daughters Mm -hmm. and so more than ever I'm you know just like in um, engrossed in like the, you know, the, the movement to, you know, empower women yeah. and to get to build this up. So, um, you know, I, I suppose it's a bit selfish of me now. So my, so my daughters have the opportunity to succeed, but I've always been, mm-hmm. you know, truthfully in that mindset. So I'd love for you to share if you could for young girls or young women or young entrepreneurs coming up advice that you might have for them as far as getting started or challenges you think they might face and uh you know that that they could overcome i think in our culture there is um it's sad and i'm not speaking maybe to like harvey or our generation where we're changing things but as women have been raised particularly in south asian culture i feel like we are told to like not have an opinion um you know be quiet um don't speak up for yourself put other people first And I think that can really damage someone's creativity and um, self-confidence. And I feel like there's a lot of that sort of like pushing that spirit down of independence. It's not looked upon well, you know, like if you, like, even if you think about the, the premise of marrying who you want to marry, being, you know, Punjabi and having your own like love marriage versus like arranged marriage, there's a lot of cultural things that I feel like are there to sort of suppress like the South Asian spirit. And that really, I find disheartening. And you're seeing a lot of it like more broken, um, you know, but, you know, it's, it's like if you are somebody who is, I feel like there, there should, you should basically instill confidence in your, in your child to really feel like they don't need anyone in this world to bring yourself, bring yourself happiness, except what's inside of you. Like if you need to love yourself, I think self-love is so important. And there's so many elements in this world that are telling you you're not enough. Don't love yourself, you know? And, and I think that's the biggest gift. If I could go back to my younger self and talk to her, those would be the words that I would say is just like, you, you have to be your number one priority, you know, and if you're a good person and you have a good heart, follow your dreams, don't doubt yourself. And, um, I think so much can come out of that. You're going to see so much growth when it comes to like the South Asian female, like diaspora. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think despite what's happening in the world and all the challenges we're facing, it's a great time to be alive. Growing up, I didn't see um, women of color on TV. I didn't see, I didn't hear them on the radio. I didn't, you know, I didn't see supermodels in like the magazines that were Indian. Like it was hard, so I didn't know that there was, there was even room for me to in any of those fields. You know what I mean? I feel like now, if I were to have a daughter, I'm really proud that you know us South Asian women have really paved the way, 
you look, you turn on the TV, we're there. You turn on the radio, we're there. You, you know, look on Instagram, so many influencers. There's so many young entrepreneur women that are doing such amazing things. And look at, you know, the vice president elect. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, I think it's a great time. And I think any young girl that's going to be growing up, there, there is no ceiling cap. You could do whatever it is you want to do. I just think it's such a beautiful time to be alive. And I'm really so excited and hopeful. And I just can't wait for this next generation to come and even surpass us. Yeah, that's awesome. So uh, there's two questions that I like to ask at the end of every podcast. And I think we've actually kind of answered one of them, but I'm going to ask it anyway. So maybe you'll come up with a slightly different answer. So the first of the two, and I'd like for you to think of, Uh, I mean, your answers may overlap, but think of your own answers separately if you can. But the first question is, if we could head, hop in a time machine and head back in time to a particular point in time where you were struggling or you were facing a difficult challenge, you could share that moment, like you can share that story if you like, but more importantly, what advice would you give to yourself at that time? Oh, wow. Well, I'm going to go three or three years ago, I went through hell. Um, two years, three years. Um, and I'm going to, I, my mom gave me some really great advice and she said, you know, time heals all wounds. And if I could go back to that person that was just shattered and broken, Mm -hmm. I wish I could tell her, just listen, listen to all the wisdom that all these women that are older than you, that have seen things, have been through things, believe their words because you will come through this and God will only put you through what he could pull you out of. I just, I wish I hung on to those words and it got me through it. And I, I would go back and I would just give myself the same advice. Yeah. And anything I feel like in life, it's not a setback. It's an experience. Mm -hmm. So don't let it sort of like kick you off your feet, learn from it. Like there's, there's a lesson in everything. What is like, why did something go wrong? Um, Kind of figure out what that point is, but keep working and you know, whatever is not serving you eliminate that out, out of your life. Yeah. So, yeah. So not, not letting, not letting your failures define you and trying to always stay positive and mm-hmm. learn from, yeah, learn from your mistakes. Yeah, absolutely. So not looking at them as failures, but more like learning experiences. A hundred percent. Awesome. Life goes on. If that yeah. is like the one thing that I could get printed on a t-shirt, <laughs> <laughs> life, life goes on and it's exactly. all, yeah. all it literally is a state of mind. Success is a state of mind. You choose to be happy. You choose to keep yourself busy. You can focus on the negative or you can focus on the positive. So I always try to think, tell people like envision who you want to be. And what do you think that person does in their daily life routine? Like, what do you, how, how is that person going to come to life for you and start kind of working towards that path? It's kind of like, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. You know, it's like, it's like the whole premise behind like the secret. You want that life, be that person. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, totally. I agree with you every day. It's like when there's challenges, even today, it's so funny. So Sue, Sue and I are going through this whole thing with this house build, which I, oh my God, I just want to rip my own hair out. And he was like, either you could dwell in this or you could grow from this. So what do you want to do? And I'm like, fine, we'll grow. What is <laughs> fine. <hell?" laughs> fine. If you're going to make me, that's good. That's great that you have a Sue there as well. And it sounds like Pinder as well is like such supportive people. Um, I mean, yeah. that, that I, you know, having a, you know, Pam is such a supportive. Pam like, is the best. I love her. I call, communicate <laughs> with her on Instagram all the time. Yeah, I know. And she, she always tells me that you guys have great conversations. So thank you. But like having Pam is like this rock as this person who support me through so many things and being knowing when to like push the right buttons, you know, soft touch versus kick in the ass. Like she's got that down pat so that, that it's, it's extremely helpful to have that too. So that's awesome. So the last question uh, is, Every, everything that you've accomplished and there's so much that I couldn't even list it all. Um, how much of that would you say is due to luck and how much is due to hard work? It's all grit. There's no, there's no luck. No it's, luck. you know, it's constantly posting, growing, you know, coming up with ideas, coming up with products, improving your services. It's like an ev- evolution. I, I like, I don't believe, I don't believe in like, life path or psychics or being like born into something i like i am a hundred percent believer that you control your whole reality you control your state of mind if you control yourself there's nothing that you can't accomplish right and the whole idea that oh somebody is lucky like yeah okay if i go you know put a lottery home ticket in and i win that that's luck but 
uh, those things are only going to happen very few and far between. And you can't expect luck or fate. Like those things don't exist. You control your path. You control your fate. You control your journey. You control your message. It all stems from inside of you. So you have to kind of like find that power source and kind of like run with it. I 100% agree with what she said. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. There's no Amazing. such, I don't believe in luck. I don't think, I believe in coincidences, but no luck. Fair no. enough. Thank you. And Thank you have you to do, I feel like another thing is when, that's one thing that Harp and I have done too. I think people can really get inside their own heads and doubt themselves. Anytime we've had an opportunity, we've always said yes to the opportunity. And then later we'll panic behind closed doors and figure <laughs> out like, oh my God, we're going to do this. But like, we will always say yes first and then figure it out after. Like yeah. getting something done is better than perfect. So for anyone out there that's now spinning their wheels, I need to have the perfect website. I need to have the perfect logo. Like, nope, you need to hit the ground running and figure your journey along the way. Otherwise, you can literally get stuck in the mud spinning your wheels and not even get the, the cord out of the barn. You know what I mean? Awesome. So <laughs> like done is better than perfect. And yes. figure, figure your journey on the, uh, on the way. Just take that leap of faith, man. Believe in yourself. It all comes down to, um, you know, believing, believing in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, you know, that's just the number you one. This. You got this. You got this. That's amazing. Uh, thank you for that, that shot of inspiration. I think that's that motivation. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, there was something in there that I wanted to comment on, but it's just perfect the way you said it. So I'm not even going to bother. Uh, where can people find you guys, whether it's Instagram or wherever, how can people connect with you? Instagram, I think we're the most active on, um, at Pink Orchid Studio, um, Harp Sohal, the Instagram account, Shannon Man Official is my personal as well. Um, we're always on there. We're always connecting with people. We're always, you know, people, we try to get to DMs. When people send us messages, we're pretty interactive with people that uh, communicate with us, which is nice. Um, if they want to email uh, us about rates and availability, you can check out our website. There's lots of resources on there on our classes, our products we sell out of there. Um, Amazon, can, our products on Amazon. Yeah. And we have uh, all of our artist profiles and all of their work is on the website as well. It's all compartmentalized. But I feel like if you really want kind of like a daily dose of Pink Orchid Studio, the Instagram account is, you know, where you're going to find it. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. And any final words, anything thoughts you guys would like to share before we wrap up? I just wanted to say, say thank you to you, Harbier. Thanks for always supporting us. Thanks for always like encouraging us. And also like, just thank you for having us on your podcast. I listen to your podcast, so I'm oh, really excited to be on it. That's and I think you're phenomenal. Like you actually made optometry fun. I remember <laughs> when I first started following you, I was like, this guy is so funny. Like your Instagram account is so funny. I remember telling Shannon, I'm like, Shannon, his account is so funny. He's so witty. Thank you so much, Harp. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, Shannon, any last words? Um, You've shared a lot of wisdom. So don't worry if, if there's... Yeah. <laughs> I literally feel like I'm always like, you got this universe, yeah. believe in yourself. You know, you like Amazing. the president and the hat, you know, th th those are the best things I could say is like, love yourself, believe in yourself. Um, don't doubt yourself and everybody has something unique to offer and find your voice and don't yeah, self-doubt. I think self-doubt is a killer of all mm. dreams. And don't worry about what Loki can get. We like, honestly, that's one thing I feel like is like my superpower. I don't care. That's like, awesome. I have my four walls, my family, my husband, my kids, and everything else literally could be atomic bombs going on outside. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. You know, that's awesome. And for, for anybody listening who doesn't speak Punjabi, don't worry about Loki, Loki can get, don't worry about what other people are saying. And I think that's a nice little mantra to have and, uh, yeah. and just keep doing your thing. So thank you guys, please. Everybody who's watching or listening, make sure you connect with these guys. They're amazing people. Like truly, you know, like they're saying, what you see is what you get. Every time I've met with Harper, Shannon, and spoken with them, always, always love the experience. So just connect with them, follow them if you're looking for inspiration in different ways. Um, and if you're looking for makeup and hair, I mean, it's a no-brainer. So make sure you check them out. And, and I do want to say to people as well, like we, it's important for all of us to support each other. I feel like as South Asian businesses, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, I, there's definitely like a, there's a vibe where a lot of South Asian businesses do not support each other. And I think as a community, that's something we all really need to work on. Like reach out. If you like someone's profile, follow them, give them the yeah. follow, send them a message, encourage them, buy South Asian products, you know, especially like I know Harp wanted to touch on everything that's happening. And tell hashtag we stand with farmers. Yeah. We said like with everything that's happening in the job, it made us really that's kind of look back, go back, 
think about like who we are as people, where we came from and where we would like to go as a community. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, support Punjabi, South Asian, Indian, not just Punjabi, like Indian owned businesses. Let's like raise each other up. We can Mm -hmm. do a better job as a community doing that. And yes, we stand divided. We fall. Right. Yeah. And we do. We stand with farmers because, you know, that's all we all we all came from that mitti here. So we need to be united as a community. Absolutely. Uh, very important movement happening there in India. And I know in, in a lot of different ways, unfortunately, the message is not getting conveyed. And I appreciate you guys sharing as much as you guys do on social media because you have so much reach. Um, and we we're talking about how unfortunately social media and other things can block the message, um, you know, and, and so it doesn't get out there. But uh, anybody who doesn't know about it, please check it out, look it up or follow these lovely ladies and you'll see it in their stories and mine too about um, you know what's going on there and why we need to kind of support uh, people who need the support. Um, totally. I think you should do a podcast on it. I think I think I might have to. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion. Yeah. Um, thank you everyone who's tuned in, who's watching on YouTube or listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe and watch out for another amazing episode coming soon. Take care. Bye. Thanks guys. Happy holidays. <laughs>